I want to push on as rapidly as possible to save hard fighting. These terrible battles are very good things to read about for persons who lose no friends. But I am decidedly in favor of having as little of it as possible. The way to avoid it is to push forward. Ulysses S. Grant. Hiram Ulysses Grant was born at Point Pleasant, Ohio on April 27, 1822. His father, Jesse, ran a tannery, and its stench was one of his first memories. He was sensitive and withdrawn with people, but wonderful with horses. His father thought him hopelessly impractical and got him an appointment to West Point. A clerk mistakenly registered the boy as Ulysses S. Grant, and rather than complain, he lived with it. His friends called him Sam. He was graduated in the middle of his class. The next year, he was engaged to Julia Dent, the daughter of a Missouri slave owner. He adored her, and she bore him four children. Grant thought the Mexican War wicked, but went anyway. I considered my supreme duty was to my flag, he wrote, and served bravely in battle, riding alone through a hail of enemy fire to bring ammunition to his men. After the war, the Army sent him to a remote California outpost where, lonely and miserable without his family, he began to drink. Dear Julia, I sometimes get so anxious to see you and our children that I am almost tempted to resign and trust to Providence and my own exertions for a living. Whenever I get to thinking up the subject, however, poverty, poverty begins to stare me in the face. In 1854, he left the army and returned east to rejoin Julia and work a piece of land his father-in-law gave him. He called it Hard Scrabble Farm and could not make a go of it. He tried bill collecting, real estate, raising potatoes, even peddling firewood in the street. Nothing worked. One year in St. Louis, he pawned his watch to buy Christmas presents for his family. He had been reduced to working as a clerk in his father's harness shop in Galena, Illinois, when the war began. As a West Point graduate, Grant was a scarce commodity. He re-entered the Army and never looked back. In this season, I saw energies in Grant. He dropped a stoop-shouldered way of walking and set his hat forward on his head in a careless fashion. John A. Rawlins. He was promoted to Brigadier General, won a small battle at Belmont, Missouri, then a big one at Fort Donelson, at a time when other northern generals were going down to defeat. His soldiers do not salute him. They only watch him with a certain sort of familiar reverence. They observe him coming, and rising to their feet, gather on each side of the way to see him pass. No Napoleonic displays, no ostentation, no speech, no superfluous flummery. He was distinctly unglamorous and had only one personal attendant, a runaway Missouri slave named Bill. He didn't like marching bands and could recognize only two tunes. One was Yankee Doodle, he said, and the other wasn't. He insisted that his meat be cooked dry because even a suggestion of blood on his plate made him sick. Once, on the eve of a battle in which thousands of men would die, he had a teamster tied to a tree for six hours for mistreating a horse. He was methodical, dogged, and uncommonly clear-headed under fire. Grant the general has uh, many qualities, but he had uh, a thing that's very necessary for a great general. He had what they call four o'clock in the morning courage. You could wake him up at four o'clock in the morning and tell him that they'd just turn you to the right flank and he would be as cool as a cucumber. He had an ability to concentrate. A good example of that is he would be working at his desk, bent over writing, and he would need something across the room, a document or something. He would get up and never get out of that crouch position, go over there and pick up the document he needed, come back to his desk and sit down again without ever having straightened up. It's an example of how he could concentrate. 
He drank bourbon, and he got drunk easily. A Galena neighbor, John Rollins, was made his chief of staff and took it upon himself to keep Grant sober. Grant never got drunk when his wife was around. It was only two conditions Grant would drink under. One was his wife wasn't there, and the other was there wasn't anything going on. He went on a true bender uh, during the Vicksburg campaign, but it was when nothing was happening. It was as if he, uh, whether well, there was anything sexual about his wife being out of touch, I'm not too sure about, but I do know that it was uh, boredom that would, that would make him drink. Now he traveled south to Meade's headquarters at Brandy Station, near Culpeper, Virginia, the largest Union encampment of the war. April 19. Yesterday, the sixth call was reviewed by Lieutenant General U.S. Grant. He is a short, thick-set man and rode his horse like a bag of meal. I was a little disappointed in the appearance, but I liked the look of his eye. Elijah Hunt Rhodes. We all felt at last that the boss had arrived. While Grant conferred with Meade, members of his staff described Grant's triumphs in the West. Veterans of the Army of the Potomac were not impressed. That may be, one said, but Grant never met Bobby Lee. <laughs> 